offensively, you did a lot of good things off since Saturday and then some not so good things at the end. What, what can you build from and what do you need to learn from? Well, we can build from the fact that um, we did a phenomenal job executing um, our attack mode offense that we wanted to. We played with great tempo, threw the ball down the field, made a lot of competitive plays. Uh, offensive line did a great job with protection. Um, backs ran hard all day. I mean, we felt like we did a lot of good things, had a lot of yards, a lot of production. Then at the end, really in the fourth quarter, just really a lack of, of execution, um, probably um, on our part as coaches and, uh, and, and um, number one. So we got to put our kids in better situations. But um, excited about what we did, excited about what we can build on in the future with, with, uh, with attacking and throwing the ball down the field. And uh, I thought our kids showed they could make a lot of big plays. It was good to see. Is it for them to go through the film? And, you know, I think Nate said up until that fourth quarter, it was probably about as, as well as he felt the passing offense had clicked all year. For them to watch that film and see, you know, the first three quarters and then sort of transpose it against that fourth. Yeah, no, it is disappointing because we know what we're capable of and, and, and we didn't do, uh, we didn't play up to our standard in, in that last quarter. And that is frustrating. We feel like we let our team down and, and uh, we just, we can't do that. So, yeah, it's disappointing. It's frustrating. But we're moving on and, and that's life. That's how it works. And we're ready to go get Michigan State. That I hadn't seen as much previously this year. Was that partly what Rutgers was allowing, or was that part of the game plan coming in? Yeah, a little bit of the game plan, um, but then also th those are things that fit our base pass offense, our base package. Um, really, we wanted to get our guys to come off the ball running, uh, being vertical threats down the field, and uh, we were able to open up, like you said, you said, some holes in the middle of the field, and um, the guys made some great competitive plays. They made some big plays, and I, I was happy to see that. Talking about not really being able to dominate the time of possession late in the game. So Jordan, how much of it is not having Jordan, and how much of it is kind of uh, on the offensive line or on the, the existing guys who are on the field? Yeah, I, I think it's more on us as coaches more than it is any, any of the kids. You know, and Jordan Howard's a phenomenal player. We'd love to have him back, and we will very soon. Um, but you know, that that that, that we got to put our kids in better situations. That's what it comes down to. I, I don't think it's any. Uh, any player's responsibility other than us as coaches to make sure we get them in the right call, and we didn't do that on Saturday. What do you think you could have done better, I guess, with the, with the play call? Just, you know, a couple of times we, 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 we messed up the protection call um, as coaches, or we didn't get them in the, in the proper protection, I guess, if you will. Uh, run game, we probably could have done a better job creating better angles for our offensive line. Um, <clears throat> so just little errors like that schematically that we probably could have cleaned up. Mike Majette potentially brings yeah, I think he showed that on Saturday, and that, that was great for him to, to make some plays. Uh, he's got a, um, a, a different gear of acceleration and quickness once he gets into the open field. He uh, was a tremendous athlete in high school. He, he played quarterback. He played DB. He played receiver. Uh, now he's playing a little bit of running back, too. So um, he's got dynamic second gear about him, some explosiveness, catches the ball well out of the backfield. Um, very impressed with how he played, and we're looking to build upon that. One of those guys that, I mean, maybe it's not the point-to-point -point speed like Tevin Coleman. It's the ability to, I guess you said, sort of that second gear that it's maybe not that he's just faster than everybody else, but that he can get up to He can accelerate speed. quickly. There you go. I think that's a great word for it. He, he does accelerate very well. Um, and, again, I think he showed that on Saturday. You know, I don't know what his 40 time is uh, from 0 to 40. I, I don't know what he'd run, but I know when you put a ball in his hands, he can accelerate pretty quick. When you look at Michigan State's defense, I know they're not as dominant maybe as they've been in previous years, but they still present a lot of problems. What, what are they? Well, after the, the, the day and a half of film that I've seen, I think they're pretty darn good. They're pretty darn dominant, I think. Um, they're very sound with what they do. Uh, they're strong. They play through people. Uh, they blitz the quarterback. They're, they're an aggressive downhill attacking defense. Uh, so they present problems all over the place. First and second down, they're going to blitz you, come after you. Uh, try to get you into a third and long, and then they're going to get in third and long, and they do some crazy odd uh, three-man front blitzes. So phenomenal scheme. They've been doing it for a long time. It, it, they're one of the best in the country, and uh, it will be a tremendous challenge on Saturday. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.